Thank you. Um, thanks, everyone, for organizing this. This is a wonderful little session that we have. Um, I'm hoping to share some interesting work that we're doing at uh, Genelia Research Campus. Um, kind of give you an overview of what we're going to talk about. I'm going to give you a little bit of background about the problem, because this is probably not familiar to you. Can everybody hear me in the back? Yes? Awesome. Great. Uh, give you some background, explain what our question is, the algorithm that we use to attack this question and try to solve it, uh, the software that's behind the scenes making all of this possible, um, some results on curated data. So this is clean data that already has ground truth to compare against, and then new data that we've been working on and what. So background to start. Um, we're working with calcium image data. Uh, Basically, calcium is involved in synaptic transmission. Um, it's correlated with neurotransmitter release. It's used in a wide range of different neurotransmitters. So it's not connected to any specific neurotransmitter. So this is great if you're looking at all sorts of different um, yeah, cellular interactions. And it's a great proxy for neural activity. Uh, so there's like two ways people normally attack this problem. They're either looking at like electric physiological data, where they have a probe that's actually inserted in a live animal, um, and they can see activity in that sense, or they'll use this imaging approach. Uh, the advantage of the imaging approach is you actually can collect a larger field of view um, and get a better sense of collective activity. OK, to give you like a rough overview, I'm not like a biologist, so this is going to be really rough. So if you ask a lot of detailed questions, I'll try my best. Um, but basically, what's used is this thing called a fluorophore. And so these are proteins that um, have some light that's uh, reflected on them. And then they'll emit some lower frequency light. Uh, basically, what happens behind the scenes is they go under some conform or conformational change when they bind to some ion. Uh, and then they'll perform re-emission, relaxation. OK, so to give you kind of an idea, here's like some sample data. This is two photon data. Uh, kind of give you an idea of what we're actually looking at here. Perfect. Anyways, so you can see that there are these little donuts in here are cells that are firing over time. Um, they're very sparse spatially in terms of actual activity. You can see all of the cells that are active. Calcium's everywhere all the time. So that's kind of a problem we have to deal with in this data. Uh, I'll play it again so you can see it another time. So you can see that they're also they're sparse both in space and time, right? So they're not active all the time. You just see a neuron that flickers on and off. And that's the information we want to capture. We don't actually want to select all the cells. We only want to look at the active cells and figure out when they were active. Um, yeah. Any questions about this? Does this make sense? Uh, so this is also taken from mice that are head fixed. So this is a restriction of this particular approach for collecting data. This comes out of how two photon actually works. So the animal is trained on some sort of experiment uh, where they're maybe using whisker movement or forelimb movement or something, moving a joystick, something that they've been trained with a reward. So you're actually seeing their behavior in real time while they're doing this experiment and comparing. And you can see the neural activity while that experiment's happening. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, so like every photon you're seeing is coming from like little fluorophores that are emitting that. But you're not actually looking at proteins. These are actual cells, right? Does that make sense? Or? Yeah, we're not, we're not like at that low of scale. Yeah, yeah. So like to give you an idea, like each of these little donuts in here, this is like one cell, right? Um, yeah, so it's not that low level of resolution. But you can still make out the cells pretty clearly here, right? Like by eye, we have a good idea of where they are and what's active. Um, but the data sets themselves are quite large, so you can easily get into hundreds of gigabytes, terabytes even, depending on how long you're acquiring. Um, so it's a problem to go through manually, but we'll explain that more. OK, great. Uh, so the question, how can we actually understand behavior from this data? Um, so to kind of like explain that in a little more detail, what we want to do is we want to be able to identify active neurons and the traces that they have. So there's a few ways you approach this. A naive solution is we just go through and we like select every neuron by hand. And people actually do this to some extent. Not lots of people, 
Um, and normally they'll do a few things to actually help themselves with that particular problem. They'll work on a projection. So they're actually reducing their data down to like a standard deviation or a mean projection or something and then actually drawing. And then they may add something else to help out. They'll make it semi-automated. So they'll have like a morphological operator. So they go through and they click on the centers of cells. Um, again, this is still really slow, but this is something that people are comfortable with because they want to see what's actually happening with their data. Uh, another approach that you can do, and this is more common now, I'd say, is dimensionality reduction. So the data is too big. We want to cut it down in size. And we want to kind of cut out the stuff that we don't care about. We don't want the background. We don't want this noise. We just want neural activity over time. Um, yeah, so I'm going to focus on one particular type. There are many different types. Many different groups have explored them. NMF, dictionary learning, et cetera. I will talk about dictionary learning specifically. OK, to outline the algorithm. Uh, the algorithm I'm going to talk about came out of Adena originally, but it's evolved over time based on